that's basically going to determine what happens if this then that, right? That's kind of the, the whole philosophy of, of the function of smart contracts. In regards to uh, DeFi, the whole value proposition of allowing anyone in the world to be able to earn interest on their savings and the currency of their choice, to be able to make trades uh, that are you know processed through a smart contract and decentralized, and again, permissionless and open to everyone, permissionless finance. That's the amazing value proposition that I don't have to ask for permission to make this trade and I don't have to wait to go through a third party. I can just simply swap an asset with you as, as I would be handing dollars to you and you would be giving me some kind of thing, you know, you know, just I always build an example like trade. It's like you're giving me a, like an apple or a banana or something and I'm giving you cash for it. Uh, we should be able to have these free exchanges. And I think that's the kind of proposal that DeFi has and possibly in the same time, cut down fees, uh, build a better experience, and be able to uh, hopefully make the whole experience better for people in the long term. Again, I think we're far ways away from it, uh, but there's a good chance of it as well. So if, I, if I'm looking for any opportunities, that's definitely one of them. And in, in terms of opportunities, I think you really hit the nail on the head there, Nicholas, when you're talking about how we're creating permissionless finance and finance 2.0, because over the cross, over the history of finance, as you know, it's always been extremely exclusive where it's very privileged people behind closed doors that will sign contracts and make, you know, a shitload of money before an IPO, et cetera, et cetera. But this time, and this is to me the most exciting part about decentralized finance is that we, the normal people, the average Joes can get access to a market even before the institutions and all these privileged people. So uh, I don't know if that message resonates with you, but to me, it means the world. Oh, absolutely. Uh, that was the problem that I think we saw in the crypto space back in 2017 is that uh, you know, there, there still was a sense of exclusivity. And that's what I think what DeFi is fixing. Uh, to build on your point, Alex, th this is my kind of vision, you know, to put it in a kind of a macro perspective. You know, I, I think in the future, what we're going to see is more and more of a push for like digital wallets, people becoming their own banks, not having to trust, you know, uh, too much in regards to like centralized institutions. And I think that, you know, whether or not there's a mixture, I think there's going to be a mixture of the two. We're going to live in a world where above all, the key priority is, is that someone in Kenya right now, someone in Kenya with a simple mobile device in their hands can get the exact same opportunities that you or I can, whether you're in the UK, I'm in the US, you know, and that person's in Kenya. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. So long as you have that base technological device, you have access to every single opportunity that everyone else has. I mean, this is the next internet in this case. So the kind of uh, wealth transfer that this would bring for everyday people the sheer improvement to life and quality of life for everyday people who are working and you know just to get by and go through ends meet i mean this is going to be revolutionary if we can do this right and if we can collaborate as a space together to make it happen it's it's not a matter of you know uh, what i hate in crypto is i see a lot of inner competition and stuff crypto is open it most of it is open source code and it's a matter of building systems that collaborate and work with one another as seamlessly as possible so we can go from the minute market share we have right now to something that dominates the traditional financial sector that's our real enemy you know JP Morgan Goldman Sachs these people who again are either just starting to look at crypto or are still bashing it they have every incentive to do so on a, on a truly like macro level so what we need to see now is a lot more collaboration building those tools and making sure we do everything in our power whether it's on a regulatory framework or in a technological framework to make sure that people get access to those opportunities equally no matter where they're where they're born or where they come from it should be open to everyone <laughs>